guys, it's Jen. Welcome to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jen. I'm a vegetarian. I've been going to Disney for 30 years and I've been going to Disney as a vegetarian for 15 years. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my vegetarian meals from my most recent trip to Walt Disney World, what I ate, how much it cost, and bonus, the majority of these are all counter service meals. So I can't wait to bring it all to you guys. Here's a little background on me and being a vegetarian. Um, I have not had meat or pork or chicken in almost 15 years. I have been everything from a full-on vegan, which I was for almost two years, to now where I am an octo-vegetarian, which means I eat eggs, and I sometimes eat fish. So I'm actually a pescatarian, which I realize to some of you is not a real vegetarian. But for this trip, I decided to be a full-on vegetarian so all the meals I'm sharing with you, although not vegan, are all vegetarian. And a lot of you have reached out and said, I'm a vegetarian, or my mother is, or my sister is, or my child is, and I want to make sure we get good food at Disney. So at the outset, I want to tell you, Disney World is incredibly vegetarian friendly. Not only does almost every menu in the park have a vegetarian option, now this includes counter service and table service, the majority of the table service restaurants also have a full vegetarian menu, and many of them also have a full vegan menu. So let's get into this. We are going to start at the Magic Kingdom, one of my favorite counter service restaurants in all of Walt Disney World is Columbia Harbor House. This is located just right across the way from Haunted Mansion. It's kind of hidden and a lot of people I think walk right by. My one recommendation here as far as where to eat is definitely go upstairs. Uh, the upstairs tables are very quiet and you have beautiful views of Fantasyland and Liberty Square, so definitely go upstairs to eat. Columbia Harbor House has a lot of great food. They have really good fish and chips. They have a vegetarian chili that a lot of people rave about. I don't like chili, so that's not really something that I would want. But they do have a lighthouse sandwich, which is a hummus and vegetable sandwich on uh, harvest grain bread. It comes with their homemade house chips. This sandwich is my favorite. This is one of those things that I will think about when I'm not at Walt Disney World. Now, if you do not like hummus, you will not like this sandwich because it is, it's almost like, and this kind of, kind of sounds disgusting when I say it, but it's almost like hummus and coleslaw mixed together. But for whatever reason, I think maybe it's the hardiness of the bread and the bread is toasted. It just works for me. And especially on a hot day at the Magic Kingdom, I, I'm not gonna want a big bowl of chili, but this lighthouse sandwich is perfect and it's a nice, big portion. You know, some other places that I've traveled in the world, sometimes the vegetarian portions are really small. And it's actually really interesting because if you're a vegetarian, you actually need more food, not less, because you don't have a big old chunk of meat filling up your stomach. I don't really get that, but at Disney World, I find that the vegetarian portions are actually quite large. It's also friendly on the wallet at $10.69. So even with a drink, it's still a great value. And again, it's a nice big portion, so it's gonna fill you up and it's gonna keep you full for a while. The next meal I wanna talk about was at the Animal Kingdom at the Harambe Marketplace. Now, Harambe Marketplace is kind of an open air area. Um, it is not far from where the safari is. There's kind of a walkway. It can be a little bit tricky to find, but just ask a cast member and they'll direct you over there. Um, the optics here are amazing, right? There's there's bicycles tied up and there's great music playing and they it really does feel like you're in a busy marketplace. There are several different great food options in here. I got the roasted vegetable bowl and this was my first time having this and oh my gosh, I loved this dish. I'm going to say of all of the vegetarian counter service I had, this is the one that sticks out the most in my mind. There was like sweet potatoes and regular potatoes and all kinds of other different um, chopped up vegetables. I couldn't even tell you everything that was in there. Came with saffron rice. All I know is that the flavor combinations together were 
delicious. So um, if you're looking for some good Animal Kingdom vegetarian, I know a lot of people rave about um, Saltuli Canteen. I do like that, um, but this has definitely become a must eat for me when I'm at Animal Kingdom. Absolutely loved it. And the roasted vegetable bowl came in at $9.99. So again, very easy on the wallet and a nice size portion that's going to keep you going. Okay, this next meal was actually a sit-down restaurant, but I think it's a great example of a place to get a really good value on a vegetarian meal. Um, this was at Tutto Gusto, and I got the Caprese Panini, which is two uh, Caprese little sandwiches, and they come with a wedge Caesar salad. This was perfect the day we were there. It was fresh, it was delicious, and it's actually quite reasonable for a sit-down restaurant. The meal comes to $12, and it really was enough food for me. So whether you're there for lunch or for dinner, especially if you're, you know, with friends and maybe you're doing what we did was we shared a, a cheese plate, but I loved my Caprese Panini. I would definitely get it, get it again. You have to know by now, if you've watched it all, how much I love Tutto Gusto. They do not take reservations, but I'm always able to get a table in there. So maybe let's keep that one a secret. Maybe don't tell everybody how amazing it is. Cause honestly, the last time I was there, it was a little tricky to find a table and I kind of blame myself. <laughs> Okay, this next one might surprise you guys. I love Pinocchio Village House. Pinocchio Village House is in Magic Kingdom. It is right outside. It's kind of through and on the other side of it's a small world in that big open area. So the carousel is here. You've probably seen it a million times. There is downstairs and upstairs seating. I actually sat not on the upstairs that overlooks Small World, but a little bit quieter place that's normally not open, and I absolutely loved it. Here, I got a kid's meal, which you've probably heard mentioned in budget-friendly videos about Walt Disney World before, but ordering a kid's meal can be a great value, especially if you don't have a huge appetite. And what I got here was just the kid's pasta with marinara sauce, and I had an option of fries, or I think it was carrots and a cookie, which is kind of a typical kid's side and I chose the fries and you guys are not going to believe the price on this thing for six dollars and 49 cents I got a good size pasta with marinara sauce a huge order of french fries and a bottle of water so I just thought that couldn't be beat and that's what I had for dinner so if you can eat dinner at Disney for six dollars and 49 cents I think you're doing really really good so I was super happy with my meal there this restaurant can be a little crazy and a little loud. It's one of the places I definitely recommend using the mobile ordering app or going during off-peak times. Um, it just, I, just the way that the acoustics are, there can be a lot of screaming people in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you could also eat outside if it's not too hot or too cold. And I just, you know, the pasta is nothing to write home about, but sometimes a girl just wants a good pasta and marinara sauce. If you have a really picky eater in your party, you can also just get it as noodles and butter. So <laughs> it's a really great budget-friendly way to get a really good vegetarian meal. Okay, this next meal was kind of a snack in between meals, but I got the kids nachos at Mercado El Coronado. And this is that Coronado Springs. This is their food court. And they have like a little burrito area where you can make, um, they do burritos, they do tacos, they do quesadillas, and then you can get your choice of toppings. So I got the kids nachos and they had fresh guacamole and diced tomatoes and fresh salsa and sour cream and you guys, it hit the spot. Now, I am a very basic girl in a lot of ways, and I love me some nachos. And when I can do vegetarian nachos with toppings like that, oh my gosh, I am so in. So the cost on this was $7.99, and it came with, again, a bottle of water and carrots and a cookie. But I really liked that they were making everything fresh right there, and that was kind of the feeling I got in that whole food court. You know, most of us know that our vegetarians, Mexican can be a great way to go. There's usually lots of options for us to eat, and this food court was no exception. So if you're staying at Coronado Springs, definitely get some of the vegetarian options at the food court. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And then lastly, I'm gonna share with you guys my experience at Flying Fish. Now, the funny thing is, I don't know what I got. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous because you're thinking, Jen, you ate there. How do you not know what you ate? So here's how it went down. 
Our server was amazing. He was in the vlog if you watched it, great guy. And I literally said to him, and this is a trick I have used at lots of different restaurants at Walt Disney World, what is your best vegetarian dish on the menu? And he brought it to me and it was like a vegetable risotto. Um, I honest to God do not know what it was called because Chantelle and I went back and looked at the vegetarian menu, which by the way, they did have a full separate vegetarian menu. We didn't see anything on there that looked anything or sounded anything like what I ate. So I don't know what it was. I know it was delicious and I know I thoroughly enjoyed my meal. My only argument there would be that I wish the portion had been a bit larger. Now Flying Fish is one of those restaurants where you know you can you get everything a la carte so I probably should have gotten a salad or something in addition to that but the entree itself was yummy. So if any of you have eaten there recently and you know what it was that I got I have this sneaking suspicion that it might have been a vegan dish uh, but the chef at Flying Fish knows what he's doing with vegetarians and I can tell you it was incredibly yummy. I do not know how much it cost because I was treated to dinner that night which is a really great way to save money at Disney have other people pay for you. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it is, but don't don't make that a habit. You become a freeloader. People won't hang out with you if you're a freeloader. So that's it. That is what I ate on my most recent trip. I had plenty of food. I had a $50 a day budget for my food. I came in well under the $50 a day and I was really happy with all of my meals. So I hope that this helped. If you have any other questions, if you have a place you've been thinking about trying, for the most part, if they have a vegetarian uh, dish, I have eaten it. <laughs> Plethora of vegetarian options at Disney World. So I hope if the vegetarian is you or is someone that you love that this helped today and that you have a great trip to Walt Disney World. Have a great day.